So you've spent a lot of time getting your YouTube video looking great, but what about how it sounds? Well, it's super easy to get great sounding audio just by doing a few simple things before you start recording and making a couple of tweaks while you're editing. I'm gonna show you exactly what to do and I'm gonna make it really easy for you. So if you've got no experience whatsoever with audio, don't worry, just follow along and you'll have great sounding audio every single time, I promise. But if you still don't want to spend the time editing the audio yourself, I've got a whole pack of audio presets for Premiere Pro users and that's available to download from our website. So follow the link down in the description and go and watch the video about how to import those presets into your project. Before we get started though, don't forget to like this video, share it with your friends, subscribe to the channel for more gear reviews and tutorials. Follow me on Instagram, Facebook and Twitter. Ping. Leave a comment down below in the description with any questions about audio and I will reply. So the things I'm gonna be covering in this video are microphone placement, audio recording level, EQ, compression, and another little bonus tip. So stay tuned and watch the whole video so that you don't miss this really handy extra tip. Okay, let's begin. I just wanna start though by saying that if you are using the audio straight from your camera, the results will be limited. However, some of the EQ and compression tips later on in the video will help you. So it's definitely worth staying around for them. But it will always sound better with an external microphone. But don't be discouraged because these microphones are really affordable these days and they all sound great. The microphone I'll be using is the Rode Video Mic Pro Plus but don't worry because these tips apply to whatever you're using because I'm not talking about the specific settings that this microphone has built in. Okay, so step number one, microphone placement. You wanna make sure that your microphone is roughly about a foot away. Try and get it as close as possible, but not right up close like this. I mean, you can do that, but it gives you a slightly different sound, which we'll talk about in a bit. I recommend that you purchase a stand like I've got here or a boom arm so that you can get the microphone above you and out of the frame. It's literally just here. If I moved it down an inch, you'd probably be able to see it. That's how, that's how close it is there. But also having a microphone in in the frame is absolutely fine as well. I could set this one up. If you don't have a stand and you've already got one of these mini tripods, you could just attach your microphone to this and pop it on your desk or in front, wherever, and you could have it in the frame and that would be absolutely fine. Also, you'll need a an extension cable. I've got one here. Um, it's just so that you can mount the microphone on a stand and you can place it wherever you want and I mean, how do you explain a cable? It's obviously longer than the one that comes comes with it, so you can put it further away from your camera. That's what I'm trying to say. Anyway. The reason that the microphone should be at this distance is that it's close enough to me so that I don't have to turn the camera recording audio level up too high, which results in that hiss sound. Second reason, because it's closer to you and the level on the camera is lower, you're gonna pick up less reverb bouncing from the walls. But it's still at a distance where it sounds natural. Natural, Na natural, natural, Na natural, 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 natural. Think about it, when you're talking to somebody, you're generally a couple of feet away and that's how we're used to hearing each other. With mainly voice, but a little bit of natural reverb as well. Whereas when you've got a lapel mic on attached to your clothes, it tends to sound a little bit too clean and it's like somebody's talking to you directly in your ear. So that's why I prefer a microphone on a boom arm or a stand and a natural distance away from whoever's speaking. Right, step number two before you start filming anything, the recording level. The higher the recording level is set on your camera, the more hiss will be introduced into your sound. People think that you have to turn it up as high as possible to get the best sound, but really that's just introducing more noise and more chance of external noises being picked up by the microphone as well. So really you want to aim between minus 12 and minus 18 dB on your camera recording level. By doing this, the less chance of clipping and distortion you'll get, so you'll get a cleaner sound. And you can just turn it up in your software afterwards, and because it was a quieter level when you were recording, when you do turn it up, you're not gonna get as much hiss. Whereas when you turn it up on your camera, you got the hiss, and then you try and 
alter the volume on there afterwards as well, you're gonna make that hiss louder and all the echo from the room as well. So everything will be amplified. That's why it's best to have the recording level as low as possible. And if you do have settings on your microphone, make sure that the gain boost is on. I've got a plus 20 dB gain boost on this microphone. So I turn that on and that means that I can have the camera recording level really, really low. So these are the simple adjustments you can make to get better sounding audio before you even start recording. Just doing these few things will improve the quality so much. But let's look at what we can do in post to get even better results. So I've dragged a clip into Premiere Pro that I'm gonna use for an example. And you can use these same tips in whatever software program you're using. The layouts might be slightly different, but the principles will be the same. You're gonna to have to make different adjustments to me anyway, because your audio is gonna be different, because you're gonna sound different to me. Uh, you're gonna be in a different environment, which is gonna sound different, using a different microphone, different camera, etc. So you won't be able to do everything exactly the same anyway. It'll make sense when I start explaining. So once I've dragged the clip that I'm going to use, what I like to do is set an in and out point and set a loop. So I've got this little button here, the playback loop. If you haven't got that, just click the plus and then looking for this loop playback item, drag it onto this window here and you're good to go. So when we select that, this section that I've selected will loop around um, it just means that I don't have to keep pressing play and dragging it back to start the clip again. I can just let it keep playing whilst I'm making my audio adjustments. So that's going to keep playing. I'm going to add the EQ first. So up here in our effects window, I'm going to type in EQ and I'm going to add a 20 band EQ. Just drag it over the top of your audio and then we want to go over to the left hand side and click edit and that will bring up the graphic equalizer. If you don't know anything about equalization or compression, I'm just going to go through it in really simple terms and non-scientifically. But this basically displays certain frequencies, which tells you which frequencies they are along the top. And this is what they call a flat EQ. Everything is just set to zero. And what we want to do is highlight any bad frequencies and drop them. So we're going to listen to the audio, see what it's hear what it sounds like, pull up the frequencies one at a time. If we don't like any, we'll drop it down to get rid of it. So that's how you get rid of any nasty noises. Same thing works in reverse. If you like a frequency, we want to boost that and make it higher in the mix. You'll see what I mean. So let's let's go for it. Let's play the clip. So here's a little clip that I'm going to use to edit the audio. We're going to change the EQ and the compression. So here's a little clip that I'm going to... So I've just listened through to start with without adjusting anything because I want to get a sense of what it's like before I change anything. I can hear a little bit of low end rumble. So let's try and find where that is. It's going to be on this side. Left is your low end. In the middle is your mid range, obviously, and then your high end is on the right hand side. So I'm going to try and identify that low rumble. We're going to use to edit the audio. We're going to change the EQ and the compression. So Can you hear that? A little clip that I'm going to use to edit the. We're going to change the EQ and the compression. So here's a little clip that I'm going to use to edit the audio. We're going to change the EQ and the compression. So it's around this 125 that doesn't sound great. So I'm just going to drop that out. So here's a little clip that I'm going to use to edit the audio. We're going to change the EQ and the compression. So here's a little clip that I'm going to use to edit the audio. We're going to change the EQ and the compression. So here's a little clip that I'm going to use to edit the audio. We're going to change the EQ and the compression. So here's a little clip that I'm going to use to edit. But as you can hear, that's made it sound a little bit too thin. So we don't want to we don't want to lower it too much. The audio, we're going to change the EQ and the compression. So here's a little clip that I'm going to use to edit the audio. I'm just going to go through the rest of them now so you can hear what the different frequencies sound like and I'm just going to pull them out as and when. Audio, we're going to change the EQ and the compression. So here's a little clip that I'm going to use to edit the audio. We're going to change the EQ and the compression. So here's a little clip that I'm going to use to edit the audio. 
we're going to change the EQ and the compression. So here's a little clip that I'm going to use to edit the audio. We're going to change the EQ and the compression. So here's a little clip that I'm going to use to edit the audio. We're going to change the EQ and the compression. So here's a little clip that I'm going to use to edit the audio. We're going to change the EQ and the compression. So here's a little clip that I'm going to use to edit the audio. We're going to change the EQ and the compression. So here's a little clip that I'm going to use to edit the audio. We're going to change the EQ and the compression. So here's a little clip that I'm going to use to edit the audio. We're going to change the EQ and the compression. So here's a little clip that I'm going to use to edit the audio. We're going to change the EQ and the compression. So here's a little clip that I'm going to use to edit the audio. We're going to change the EQ. Are you sick of my voice yet? So you'll you'll notice that when you EQ in a voice, you won't be able to hear much difference when it gets past this 88 range. So there's not much point in chain altering anything from there. So let's hear what that sounds like before and after. This is before. So here's a little clip that I'm going to use to edit the audio. We're going to change the EQ and the compression. And then this is after. So here's a little clip that I'm going to use to edit the audio. We're going to change the EQ and the compression. There we go. That's much better. That's really all it is. We're just making the frequencies equal. Any frequencies that you can hear more or less of, you just want to alter them. Once I've finished with the EQ, I then add compression. So we type compression and we want single band compressor. So we're just going to drag that over the top of our clip and then click edit. That brings up our compressor. General rule of thumb, I'm not going to go into all the compression settings and what everything does. Basically what compressor does is it squashes the sound. Depending on, on your settings, it brings up the level of any quiet noises or sounds and squashes any sounds that are too loud. So it evens out the sound of your voice or whatever it is you're compressing. I'm not going to go into what everything means. I'm just going to show you my general rules and you can have a play about with it yourself. If you do want a more in-depth explanation about all of this stuff, let me know in the comments below and I'll work on a video for you because it, it can be really helpful. As a general rule of thumb, I tend to aim for 2.5 to one on this ratio here. That's a nice even compression sound. And then the threshold, what that does, it, it alters the sound from wherever you set it. So the lower you go, the more the compressor is going to work. You'll hear that straight away, squashing the sound of my voice. Are you ready? To edit the audio, we're going to change the EQ and the compression. And then you'll hear it even more when I change the output gain. Change the EQ and the compression. So as you can hear, because I've gone so far down, you'll be able to hear a lot of the reflections from the walls. Oh, that's not good. We don't want to go that far. So listen to this. So here's a little clip that I'm going to use to edit the audio. We're going to change the EQ and the compression. We don't want to go that far. So let's bring this back down. What we're going to do is start at zero and gradually bring it down to a nice sounding natural compression. That I'm going to use to edit the audio. We're going to change the EQ and the compression. So here's a little clip that I'm going to use to edit the audio. We're going to change the EQ and the compression. So that's nice and natural. That's not too much. We've still got a decent level. The further you bring that threshold down, the higher you'll have to bring up the output gain to compensate. If we turn this compression off, for a second. Look where the original audio volume was peaking. EQ and the compression. So here's a little clip that I'm going to use to edit the audio. We're going to change the... So it was exactly as we recorded it, between minus 12 and minus 18. EQ. And that's where we want to keep it. So we don't want to bring it any higher than that and we don't want it to go any lower than that. So when we're altering the output game, make sure it stays where your original audio volume was. And the compression. So here's a little clip that I'm going to use to edit the audio. We're going to change the EQ and the compression. So here it is, before and after. Here's the before. So here's a little clip that I'm going to use to edit the audio. We're going to change the EQ and the compression. And after. So here's a little clip that I'm going to use to edit the audio. We're going to change the EQ and the compression. Right, so that's the EQ and compression done. Let me just give you a before and after of what it sounds like with all the effects off. So here's a little clip that I'm going to use to edit the audio. We're going to change the EQ and the compression. And here's what it sounds like with the EQ and compression on. So here's a little clip that I'm going to use to edit the audio. We're going to change the EQ and the compression. 
as you can hear it's a lot smoother and just a lot cleaner sounding the last thing to do is to just adjust the volume so you can either do it on the left hand side here and turn the level up from here or you could do it directly from this audio clip here so we're going to play it through and turn it up and we're going to get it to so that it's not clipping basically so i aim sort of for around minus six so here's a little clip that I'm going to use to edit the audio. We're going to change the EQ and the compression. So that's it. I forgot to have my little light on that whole time. As I mentioned earlier, if you want to check out my preset pack, they're available on my website. They're really simple to use. All you need to do is import the presets into Premiere Pro and then drag and drop them onto your footage. There we go. Easy as that. Sammy. What's this extra bonus tip that you told us about earlier in the video? Well, I nearly forgot. So here I am. I've had to get changed again and put this jumper on because I forgot. I mean, I could have got away with it really if I hadn't mentioned it. But anyway, the bonus tip, it's a really simple one. It does take a little bit of extra time, but it's well worth it for the results. Basically, what you want to do is listen back to your clips on a handful of different audio sources. For example, listen back through your laptop speakers, your studio speakers, your computer speakers, or a pair of headphones, and try and get the audio to sound good across all of those different sources. That way, when people are listening to it on these different devices, such as their phone, computers, with different speakers, it's gonna translate well across all of those devices. So that is my bonus tip for you. Spend that little bit of extra time tweaking the audio, and the results will pay off. So I hope you could follow along with that. I hope these tips are helpful. I hope it's given you something to think about when you're doing your next video and that these tips will come in useful for you and improve the audio of your videos. Give it a try. If you've got any questions, please let me know in the comments below and I will reply to you. All that's left to say is thank you so much for watching, if you still are. Don't forget to subscribe to the channel for more gear reviews and tutorials like this one. Like the video share it with your friends and I'll see you next week.